Hey guys, this is Nirpom from the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. As you can see here today, I am with the Canon R5, my favorite underwater camera, uh, and generally our favorite underwater camera here at Blue Water Photo, uh, as well as a couple of Canon R5 housings, the Nauticam R5 housing and the Eichlite R5 housing. We also sell a CNC R5 housing and an Isoda R5 housing. Um, on the Eichlite R5 housing, you can see I have an Atomos Ninja 5, uh, housing hooked up to it, so that's been pretty cool to shoot underwater. I've got the new RF 100mm macro lens and I've got a Ninja 5 hooked up right here. So what we're going to do today is go directly into my recommended underwater settings for underwater photo and video. I feel like I've got it pretty down pat after shooting this camera over the last year and uh, I'll try to do this all in one go as quick as possible. Um, if I make some mistakes, feel free to correct me below uh, or give me any suggestions on what you might do for your underwater settings. Before I really get into the feed, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, the buttons. So there are three dials on the R5, There is, uh, which is one dial for each control. So you can control your, um, your aperture, your ISO and your shutter speed with the three dials. So that really makes controlling your triangle of exposure very easy and uh, it's one of my favorite features of the camera. If you want to move your autofocus point around you can do so with a joystick on the back of the camera. However, keep in mind that this is not compatible with all underwater housings. Um, Let's see, the back dial is not a D-pad, so that's something to keep in mind. When you do go through the menu settings, you are going to have to use your dials to scroll through rather than actually hitting a D-pad, so uh, it's not my favorite, but it's okay. I think it's nice having the three dials instead of a D-pad either way. And then finally, on the back of the camera, there is a Q button. And that Q button is really where you're going to do your day-to-day -day settings when you're underwater. Uh, any setting that you want to be just one button push away, I recommend customizing it and putting it in the Q menu. Now, the R5 has a lot of buttons, but it's not as customizable of, as a camera as um, some Sony cameras. That being said, it's laid out really nicely. It's very ergonomic, so I've been happy with it overall. Uh, so let's start by talking about our Q menu because that is really the most important menu to me. Uh, so this is our Q menu and um, it's got all my important settings that I use underwater. Uh, the first thing it has is the autofocus setting. So uh, generally the autofocus on the R5 is so good that I like to keep it in autofocus continuous because the camera is always searching and it's pretty accurate with its autofocus, especially with this RF 100 millimeter macro lens that I have on it. So RF continuous on uh, Canon cameras is servo, so I leave it in servo mode. Now for the um, AF area mode, I leave that in tracking. And the reason I do that is because the tracking is actually very accurate. Um, I can actually, so here's my camera on the tripod that's filming me. And you can see the autofocus tracking is super accurate. All you have to do is click your back button to lock the autofocus and it will track your subject, in this case, the camera. So I like to use autofocus tracking when I'm uh, basically shooting anything. Wide angle macro, it's so accurate that I can pan around. It really just lets me focus on composition and I like that. If you are shooting macro and you want to dial down on a subject that's not really moving at all, uh, you can do autofocus single. So you go to your AF mode, area mode, and then you go to, uh, well, you go to one shot and then you can go up here and you can use spot AF and again that can be moved with a joystick or with dials. Um, so here's a spot, spot AF. So again I would usually use that for macro subjects or subjects that are staying still um, but personally I do like using tra tra uh, tracking much better. Alright so let's switch back to tracking and then here we go. Perfect. All right. I like to shoot raw. I recommend shooting raw uh, when it comes to image quality. For the dry mode, uh, you can you can move around depending on what you're shooting. If you're shooting a lot of action, go ahead and switch it to uh, low speed continuous and all of a sudden you'll be able to shoot a lot of photos. Um, with your strobes probably keeping up. Now if you aren't using strobes and you want to get some really quick action, you can go to high speed continuous and that goes a lot quicker. Now 
Personally, I like to do single and really focus on my composition. So single mode lets you just take one photo with one click and you're good to go. Uh, for metering modes, if you have strobes, I highly recommend just staying in spot metering. Um, here we go, spot metering. And otherwise, if you are not using strobes, you can use evaluative metering um, or uh, center metering if you're going to be shooting into the sun. All right, anti-flicker shooting. Uh, that's okay, we don't need that. Auto white balance if you're using strobes, highly recommend that. Uh, let's see, picture style, you can ignore that because if you're shooting a raw image, the picture style is not going to apply to the raw image. Uh, I generally disable the auto lighting optimizer and we are in a full aspect ratio. So that's your Q menu, pretty simple there. Uh, really just accesses your metering and autofocus modes. Um, now, let's see. Uh, before I get into the main menu system and what settings you want to put in your main menu, I should mention that if you want to switch to video, it's pretty quick and easy, but it's also kind of annoying because it's a two step, two button process. You got to click your mode button and then you have to click info and that will switch you to video, um, which my Ninja 5 is currently recording. So mode, info, and you'll get back out of video. All right, so when we're doing our menu settings, uh, you, you should only have to really um, edit some, you know, most of these only once. So you can set it for your underwater photography and not really think about it too much. Uh, when it comes to image quality, like I said, raw, uh, dual pixel raw, I disable that. Uh, cropping aspect ratio to full, that'll use your full sensor size. Uh, the exposure compensation, you can leave at zero. ISO speed settings, Oop. ISO speed settings, you set that with uh, your dial. So don't worry about that in the menu. HDR can be off, auto lighting optimizer off, highlight tone priority off, anti flickering disabled, external speed light control. So uh, the reason I kept all those off is because you really wanna just process everything in Lightroom and not worry about your camera processing anything inside the body. External speed light control. Uh, this is good if you want to shoot TTL. This, these are the settings that I generally use. So I'll use flash firing to enable, uh, standard for ETTL balance, ETT, uh, ETTL two metering evaluated with face priority, um, and then you can you can see the the settings in the menu here. Now, if you're not shooting TTL, just leave it on default and make sure your flash firing is just enabled. Back to the menu. All right, uh, we can ignore the white balance and the custom white balance for photography. Uh, the color space, sRGB is perfect. That's the general standard color space that you want to use if you're um, putting anything online or on Facebook. If you're gonna go beyond that and really wanted to get into high-end printing, you could shoot in Adobe RGB, but just remember you have to edit in Adobe RGB. And if you export in Adobe RGB and try to post to the internet, it might look a little weird. So. Uh, if you're really into printing though, keep that in mind that that's probably the best option for you. Picture style, like I said, if you're shooting raw, it's not a big deal, but uh, I leave that on standard. Clarity, you can leave in the middle. Lens aberration correction on default. All of these I put on default. Default, we're not doing any bracketing underwater <laughs> we're not doing any timers underwater shutter mode so i recommend shooting a mechanical shutter underwater um, but you can also shoot an electronic shutter uh, which will allow you to shoot 20 frames per second and it'll allow you to shoot silently as i just did there but like i said if you're going to shoot with strobes you're going to need to use mechanical shutter because this is not the sony a1 which can shoot strobes with the silent shutter this is the r5 um, Release shutter without card. I guess, you know, you can keep the on or off. It's up to you if you want to let your camera tell you that you don't have a card. Uh, touch shutter, I disable that while I'm shooting underwater. Image review, I usually do two seconds. 
just it'll it'll show you your image after you take the photo just for a couple seconds so you can see you know how's your focus how's your um, exposure and everything like that exposure simulation so this is really important if you are shooting with strobes you want to make sure that this is disabled what exposure simulation does is it applies the settings in your camera to the image that you're viewing in the LCD so if you don't disable it with strobes everything will look dark so if you if everything looks dark remember to disable the exposure simulation when you aren't shooting with strobes then you can enable exposure simulation so just keep that in mind Uh, again, I, I keep these in default. Now, autofocus modes. So this uh, this is, you know, you can change your autofocus mode preferences based on you as an individual. I like to use autofocus tracking. I like to use um, the animal eye autofocus and make sure that's on uh, and, you know, and, and, and activated so that if it does see a fish or an eye on a fish, it'll pick that up and it'll follow that around. So uh, I put it in servo AF as I mentioned. Uh, again, this is the AF area mode that we changed in our Q menu. Oops, sorry. There we go. Eye detection enabled. Uh, and subject detection is animals. Continuous AF. Disabled. Alright. Um, if you are going to shoot manual focus, which I don't think most people will underwater, and the autofocus is so good you don't really need to, um, but you can turn on your peaking, and I usually set it to red uh, when I do use manual focus underwater. You want to turn your AF assist beam firing off because that's just going to waste battery since you're inside of a housing anyway. And focus guide can remain off. Now, I like to use case two uh, when it comes to my subject tracking preferences, and that means it'll track a subject and ignore possible obstacles. So if you have any backscatter really coming in, um, then case two will help you not focus on backscatter, but just keep focusing on the subject. Let's see, I leave all of this on default. But the most important thing uh, when you are setting your autofocus tracking is to make sure that this setting on number five is set. So initial AF point set for smiley face brackets. That's, <laughs> I don't really know how you're supposed to pronounce that, but you wanna make sure that you're set on this first setting up here. Uh, again, that's in your AF five panel for the first option. You wanna make sure you're set on initial AF point set for smiley face brackets. And what that does is it brings the bracket uh, for your autofocus tracking back to the center after every time you decide to track something like this, now it's back to the center. Everything else I leave in default, default here, default here, default here. It's all your playback, so I just leave it in default. Um, with Wi-Fi connection, I leave that in default. Uh, you can format your memory card here. And I believe I've downloaded everything. Um, but I will not format just in case. Anyway, you can format here and uh, it'll say all data will be lost and it gives you the option to cancel if you don't want to format, so you can press cancel. All right. Um, anyway, I leave most of this other stuff on default. Uh, now, this is where you can choose how you want to switch between your viewfinder and your screen. Uh, when you have your camera in an underwater housing, you really have to pick your viewfinder or your screen. So I like to shoot with my screen because I don't want to um, spend the extra on a magnified viewfinder, but if your eyes aren't what they used to be, you can shoot through a magnified viewfinder and you just select viewfinder instead of screen. Um, and again, that's in your setup three menu. So I selected screen. Everything else can be on default. Default here. Oh, you can clean your sensor. If you feel like you have sensor dust, um, you can allow your camera to clean. Uh, it doesn't work perfectly. If, if you do have a lot of sensor dust, you might have to get it clean professionally. Uh, this will reset the factory settings in the camera. And this right here will allow you to set and register settings to 
uh, your C1 through C3 in the mode dial. So uh, if you ha like a certain set of settings, let's say it's for macro or wide angle, set it up in your camera, go here and then say custom shoot shooting mode settings for C1 or C2 and C3. Then when you go back into your mode, uh, you can go to your C1, C2, and C3, and it'll be right there for you with those custom settings. So theoretically, you could switch between, you know, wide angle, macro, or whatever you want. Back to the menu. Uh, battery info is pretty useful. That's in your setup six menu. I use it a lot. You can see I'm at 95% battery because I'm recording everything on a Ninja 5. Um, but yeah, I just feel like that's a very useful thing. Um, and then this will also tell you what firmware version you're at. So make sure you always keep your firmware updated. Uh, one of the first things that happened with the R5 was um, it had pretty bad overheating problems. It would overheat in like 20 minutes of 8K video or 20 minutes of 4K video. Uh, if you update your firmware in the camera, it actually extended the amount of time that it could run before overheating at higher frame rates and resolutions. So just keep in mind that you want to update your firmware. Let's see, for exposure increments, I leave this on auto because you want the smallest increment possible. Um, auto. Now you can customize your buttons here. Personally, I actually don't mind leaving this in auto. Uh, save one, I set my aperture button. Let's see where that is. Set my aperture button to switch between viewfinder and LCD. Uh, but because I'm on a monitor, you can't actually see that. But anyway, you can customize buttons and I do recommend um, having at least one button that you customize as being switched between VF slash screen, as you can see here, because that'll allow you to switch between your viewfinder screen qu uh, quickly. And when you're in video modes, you can actually move over here and customize your video buttons as well. But like I said, I kind of like the default on the R5. It's pretty intuitive. So I left most of it there. Customizing your dials, you can switch around what your dials are. So you can switch around ISO, shutter speed, aperture, depending on where you want your dials or what direction you want them to move. Um, and there's there, this controls your uh, dial direction right here. And I, I've heard on these soda housings that, uh, and I, I think I've seen it myself, um, that when you change the dials, it'll actually be reversed. So like when you rotate the dials. So if you're shooting an Isoda camera, you might want to do, I mean, you're, if you're shooting an Isoda housing, you might want to go in the reverse direction instead of normal. But practice it, see what you like, see what feels good, and, and uh, just keep in mind you can change the rotation direction. All right, everything here is in default. Everything there is in default. Um, you know, it looks like you can't customize the Q menu. I might have been wrong there. It's been a long time since I set up this camera for underwater shooting because I've been taking it out quite a bit. Um, so maybe, I, yeah, I guess uh, when it comes to the Q menu, I guess I was just happy using the default settings. I don't believe that you can actually customize it like you can on other cameras uh, like Nikon and Sony cameras when it comes to their FN or their I menus. And that's it. I mean, the R5 is pretty simple when it comes to photography. So let's go ahead and switch, <coughs> excuse me, over to a video mode. So let's go into the main menu system so we can set everything for video. Now recording quality, uh, I was recently filming some subjects handheld and in general, when you're shooting underwater and you're shooting video, you want to shoot uh, at a higher frame rate so you can slow everything down. So at least 60 frames a second, 120 frames a second in some cases could be good. The nice thing about this camera is it's an amazing 4K camera. So I highly recommend, um, if you don't want to shoot in a high frame rate, you can disable that. But I do think it's best to have your recording size uh, and you can have a slightly larger 4K size than, than 4K or you can go to normal 4K at 60 frames a second and uh, I use all dash I um, for my codec or you could use IPB. Uh, it just depends on how much recording time you want. So I chose to have a lot of uh, data going into my 
um, file and a, and a lot of uh, detail in there, so I decided to use all dash I for my codec, but IPB is a more standard codec. I think most people will be happy with IPB. So that's your recording size. Uh, you can also go up to 8K if you so choose, but if you go to 8K, you'll only be able to shoot 30 frames a second. Um, and again, you'll want to choose if you want IPB or all dash I. Um, and you'll want to use all dash I if you're shooting like C log, C log three. Um, and I, I did do that indeed. So uh, I kept my codec on all dash I. But generally, I go to 4K, 60 frames a second, and that for me is good enough. And then if I decide I want to shoot at 120 frames a second and really slow things down, high frame rate enabled, and it'll change that automatically to 120 frames per second for you. All right, so back to the menu. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to, let's disable that 120 frames a second. All right, now we're back to 60 frames a second. Okay, so um, movie cropping, I've disabled it. You could crop, I guess, if you wanted to. Uh, now, exposure compensation, I keep at zero. ISO speed settings, you change that on your ISO dial. Uh, HDR, I keep off. Auto lighting optimizer, off, off. Um, and again, a lot of this I do in post-processing. White balance, auto white balance with some video lights. I, I'm a little bit lazy, I tend to do that. Uh, generally, the, the rule of thumb is if you're shooting a video light, you wanna try to match the color temperature of the video light uh, with the white balance or you can set a custom white balance uh, as so. Ooh. Now, the only issue is that um, when it comes to custom white balances on the R5, uh, you can kind of see it, it worked. Um, when it comes to custom white balances on the R5, you actually have to take a picture of your slate first then you go into your your menu setting you go to shooting menu three custom white balance it'll choose the last photo that you took you click ok you use the white balance data from that image of the white slate or whatever you're shooting underwater and it'll set the custom white balance for you but it's pretty clunky it's not nearly as nice as uh, doing a custom white balance with a nikon z7 or with a sony a1 so just keep that in mind if you are going to be doing a lot of wide angle video um, let's see, we've set our custom white balance. Now, uh, you can do a white balance correction if you want. Picture style, uh, this will allow you to choose any kind of, uh, color profile that you want, like, um, sepia, monochrome or something. Um, but generally you want to use standard, uh, unless you want to start editing, uh, in log and get a little bit more detail and dynamic range out of your video, you can go to Canon Log and you can turn that on and you can choose C-Log or C-Log 3, uh, which just adds a little bit more dynamic range but is a little bit harder to edit, or there's your standard C-Log, which is a little bit easier to edit. Um, generally, I've shot both and <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of Canon Log profiles, uh, C-Log or C-Log 3. Um, I would rather shoot uh, raw when it comes to Canon profiles. They're not quite as good as Sony. Yet. Okay, um, so you can leave these at default. You can leave this at default. Default. Uh, image stabilization mode, digital IS. So generally I would recommend turning digital IS off. The in-body image stabilization that's built into the Canon is excellent. So you can keep it as it is and I think it would be plenty good. Uh, and it looks very natural. Let's see. Zebra settings. So if you want to be able to see your zebra stripes when you're shooting video, you can turn your zebra stripes on. I recommend putting your levels at 95 to start, maybe 105 for your level twos. Oh, if you can't, so 100, I guess. <laughs> um, and this will just basically tell you where things are overexposed. Um, so I can try to overexpose it, and there you go. You can kind of see your zebra stripes, or you might not be able to because we're on a monitor system here. Um, let's see, default, 
Uh, this again, this just is the same as photo mode, so I keep this on default. Animal autofocus auto tracking, so animals, eye detection enabled, movie servo enabled. Um, you can adjust the quick, how quick your AF speed is and the tracking speed. I want to set it to be a little bit more responsive, maybe two, because I noticed it was a little bit slow actually when it came to the movie uh, servo AF tracking um, when I was taking video. I think it would be nice to have that a little faster. And and yeah, I do use autofocus uh, and do the dual pixel autofocus when it comes to cinema is very nice. Um, not everybody uses autofocus. You can still use manual focus and it does a great job, but the autofocus is getting so good on the R5 that I have no problem shooting with autofocus when I'm shooting video. I think it looks pretty natural, so. Um, Can leave it on default, default, default again. And all of these other settings are the same as before and we can leave them on default. And that is uh, all of the main settings that I recommend for the Canon R5 for both underwater photo and video. Now, just to run through a quick, quick uh, set of jump to settings. You can't see my display, unfortunately, um, in the view, uh, in, in the Ninja 5 right now because uh, it is trying to take video and not showing what's going on. Um, I should have changed the settings, but that's okay. Basically, uh, when it comes to underwater video, you want to shoot your shutter speed at double your frame rate. So if I'm shooting one, uh, if I'm shooting 60 frames a second, your shutter speed should be one one twenty fifth of a second, like it is here. Um, and then also, I would recommend for macro, if you want a lot of detail, you make a, you make a higher f-stop um, or a smaller aperture. Or you can widen your aperture and get some nice bokeh, so you can shoot at like f5 or f5.6, and you would get some interesting footage. Uh, you can put your ISO to auto ISO if you're kind of lazy about things, or if you want a little bit more control, have some video lights, uh, you can do normal... Um, you can control your ISO by itself and it's really nice because you have a dial that allows you to control ISO however you want it to be. Uh, now, if you're shooting wide angle video, I recommend shooting F13 or higher and then again 1 1 25th of a second and adjusting your ISO accordingly. Um, now when it comes to photos, let's switch back to photography. Alright, so for um, for wide angle photos, I recommend shooting at f13 or higher. And for shutter speeds, I recommend about 1 1 25th of a second, 1 1 60th of a second. But you can always drop your shutter speed if you don't have enough blue or green water in the ambient background behind it, uh, behind your subject. And then your ISO, you want to try to keep as low as possible, but you can always get away with, um, with on this camera, on the R5 in particular, I've gotten away with shooting at 1200 and it's really not an issue. There's not too much grain. It's very easy to process out and you can really denoise everything and it's totally fine. Um, now for macro, I change around my aperture a little more. If I want to open it up and get some nice bokeh, because this lens definitely has some nice bokeh, you can open it up to 2.8. Um, I don't usually do it that wide but you could also do f5.6, f6.3, um, or if you want more detail, f22. Uh, once you start getting up into the f35 range, you start getting a little bit of diffraction. So if you want a lot of detail, I just recommend f22 generally, unless you're doing some super macro stuff. Uh, again, with macro, I would keep your ISO as low as possible. So your native ISO, maybe, one, one, uh, maybe just 100. Um, and then your shutter speed, 1 1 60th, 1 1 25th of a second is perfect for freezing the frame. And of course, there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do uh, with this camera that goes beyond just the normal settings for underwater photography. But anyway, those are my quick jump to settings. Uh, I really hope you like this video and I hope it helped you kind of set up your camera for underwater photography. If you have any questions at all, uh, make sure you give me a shout. Uh, drop a comment below and we'd be happy to answer it. You can email us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. Uh, if you're interested in any of these housings or any more than what I have shown here, I'm always happy to help. If you're interested in the Ninja 5 or the monitor system and the benefits that it gives you, uh, including 
shooting, uh, you know, higher bit rates and better quality footage, reach out to us. We'll explain everything. We'll get you set up with what you need. Uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe. And we look forward to diving some more with these cameras. And we look forward to hearing your opinions on what you think are the best settings for underwater photo and video.